Hey, what's going on guys? Dano from ModBot here, and today we are taking a look at this guy. Uh, if you don't follow me on Twitter, you might not know that I recently picked up one of these Chinese K40 laser cutter engravers off of eBay, and I've been having a ton of fun with it. When I picked it up, I knew that I was going to be doing a uh, ton of different upgrades to it, but in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about an upgrade that I recently did, which is a complete board swap of the actual controller board that's inside of this. Uh, the board that it comes with is incredibly limited as far as its functionality and software compatibility, so I went ahead and swapped it out for a Cohesion 3D laser board, which really unlocks uh, a lot of potential for your K40 laser or really any laser, whether it's diode based or CO2 based. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the features of the Cohesion 3D laser board uh, that are added to your machine uh, when you install it and maybe why you'd wanna consider getting one of these for your laser that you either have or that you're thinking about getting uh, for Christmas or sometime down the line. <music> So there is a pretty good list of upgrades and uh, features that this board offers. I know that there was a couple of them in particular that were really exciting to me, which is kind of uh, was the deciding factor in my head for why this was the board that I really, really wanted to get in for my K40 lasers. So again, we're just going to go through the list of features and I'll kind of talk a little bit more in detail about what some of these mean and um, you know why you might want this. One of the first features is PWM control for full grayscale. So this laser out of the box is a 40 watt and I say 40 watt because in all reality it's advertised at 40 watt, but I believe it's more like a 30 or 35 watt. I haven't actually measure the tube to see what it's supposed to be, but regardless, it is a CO2 laser and it is capable of engraving. And I did some engraving with it when I first got it with the stock board and it wasn't terrible. But one of the things that is huge with this board is that the stock board, it only is able to, you set the power and when it's engraving, it's just kicking the laser on and off. And it has no ability through software to adjust the actual intensity of the laser while it's running a job. Well, with this board and the awesome software that you can use with it, you set the laser to essentially its maximum output and the software has full control of the ability to adjust it on the fly while it's running a job. And so what that means is that you get true grayscale and that you can do some really, really detailed uh, engraving that you could not fully achieve with the stock setup. So. That is really cool. That is, uh, it's insane the level of detail that you can hit with these lasers. Again, having that PWM control. So if you plan on doing some really detailed engraving, um, that is a massive upgrade for the laser, just that in itself. So out of the box, the K40 has some really terrible software. I actually got the software it came with and threw it in the trash. Um, there is a free piece of software called K40 Whisperer that, which is definitely better than the uh, software that it comes with it is pretty much unusable and if you are going to keep your machine stock then K40 Whisperer is certainly uh, a software that I would recommend. But if you are planning on upgrading, this uh, board allows you to use a piece of software called Lightburn which is night and day uh, different and a night and day upgrade compared to the K40 Whisperer software. There is way more features, it's got much more of a clean UI with just all sorts of control over your jobs and grouping and and uh, lining things up and just it, it's insane like seeing um, you know test uh, kind of like a uh, you can see the job running there's a preview on there um, I might actually do a full video just on light print software because of how awesome it is I've been watching uh, a couple nights ago I spent about an hour just watching some light print tutorials that they put together so that way I can really understand what all the different tools will allow me to do um, so if you guys are interested in that let me know in the comments down below but yeah the light print software is is insane compared to the k40 whisper software um, it, it really there's no comparison and uh, it is a paid piece of software for the G code version which is all we need for the k40 whisper I think it's 40 or $50, so it's not crazy. And the developer comes out with all sorts of upgrades for it. It's a really actively developed piece of software, so uh, it is it is great. And it's actually got a 30-day free trial. I can link you guys if you guys wanna download it. The trial gives you access to the full software, so it's not like, oh, you can try a couple of the tools. No, it's, it's a full-blown run for 30 days, so uh, highly recommend checking out Lightburn software. That is an also awesome thing that this board will allow you to use. So the next thing is that this board gives you a ton of extra um, peripheral add-ons that you can add to the board 
Um, there's I, I plugged it, I think there's just four things currently. There's like a power, there's the X and Y motor, stepper motor, and then there's an end stop. And that's the only things hooked up to this, but there are a ton of other inputs on this board. Uh, and one of those inputs that I plan on using over the next couple of weeks here when I've got a chance to build this is a Z table, an automatic Z table. So uh, basically a table that you put your material on and then through software, you have the ability to raise or lower your uh, stock material. And the reason why something like that is really important with the K40 laser is that the K40 laser's head is not adjustable. So a lot of lasers, you can actually adjust the head up and down. You have some kind of like a measurement tool so that way you know that the focal length is at the correct distance. Well, the K40, the head is stationary other than going, you know, back and forth on the X or Y, it's not going up and down in the Z direction. And so currently what I've been doing is just stacking material underneath whatever I'm working on until I hit that focal length but it is way less than ideal and it is not an exact science. So having the ability to just put some material on the bed and then jog it up or down to get it to the correct distance is gonna be an awesome upgrade. And with the built-in um, uh, port for the Z-Stepper, I will be able to control that via Lightburn software, which is sick. I, can't, I cannot wait to do that. I've been manually, like I said, placing things in there right now and it's been working, but it is just so, not what I want it to be. So I can't wait to do that upgrade. That's gonna be a really sweet upgrade. But on top of having a Z table port, there's also a rotary port. So a rotary attachment will basically spin a uh, round object while it is engraving. So that way you can engrave things like pens or uh, glasses or flashlights or whatever else is, is round. And um, I don't know how much I'll truthfully be doing that. I could, if, if I got that, I would certainly be using it for gifts. I'd be making beer mugs for everybody or at least beer glasses custom for everybody. Um, but that is a really cool add-on that a lot of people do want to do. Maybe for a side gig, they're taking like the kind of like hydro flasks and custom uh, etching things onto them. Well, with the default setup, you cannot add a rotary attachment. So with this board, it does allow you to plug in both. You have the ability to plug in a Z table as well as a rotary attachment. Uh, again, that is controllable via light burn. So if um, that is one of your core reasons for getting a laser is to add a rotary tool, that is certainly uh, a huge reason, uh, reason to upgrade to this board is that it does give you the ability to add one of those rotary tools. This board is gonna be compatible with just about any CO2 laser that you pick up or diode laser. Um, it's even gonna be compatible with uh, quite a few different uh, CNC builds if you are doing like an open build or something like that, but I'm, I'm focusing on the lasers here with this. Um, so one really sweet thing is that this board was designed after the form factor of the K40's stock board that the machine comes with, which I think I have somewhere. Yes, so it is designed after this. This is the stock, I believe it's called, it's the M2 Nano board. And the sweet thing about that is, is that when I remove this board, the new Cohesion 3D laser board has the exact same mounting points and form factor as this board. So um, on my machine, I didn't have to do any drilling or any 3D printed adapter. I just unbolted the four screws holding this guy in, stuck the new one in place, bolted it in, and I was ready to go. So um, that won't be the case with all lasers. Uh, for the K40, there's quite a few variants, but I was lucky enough to have a K40 that had the exact mounting points. Um, I know that Teaching Tech has one of the bigger 50 watt, um, kind of, I think it was 50 is what he went with. It might have been a little bit bigger, but a massive CO2 laser he got off of eBay. Um, and that one, he did have to create a 3D printed bracket, but for a lot of us that have these K40 lasers, which is definitely the more common one for hobbyists, um, it is a direct drop-in, which uh, anytime the install is not a pain in the butt, it, it's a huge uh, appreciation on my end. So the stepper drivers that are on this board are actually trinamic drivers, which are any of you guys that are in the 3D printing world know what that means. That means that it is, um, they are very precise and very silent, which I noticed when I homed the machine after installing, I thought that the head wasn't actually moving. I could hardly hear it until I heard the actual uh, end stop clicking in. And so these uh, trinamic drivers are able to power NEMA 17 stepper motors, which again is also what is standard on 3D printing. If for some reason you're doing your own kind of DIY rotary attachment or uh, table that is using something bigger than a NEMA 17 motor, there's actually an external um, stepper driver attachment that uh, Cohesion does sell um, that'll allow you to use a larger stepper. So for me, I'm just gonna be using a NEMA 17 with the Z-Table design that I found online. But if you do wanna use something that's 
more powerful and a larger motor, you do have the ability to uh, use a really simple plug-in to an external uh, stepper driver that again can power a larger motor. So this board is a 32-bit board, which is awesome, and it, it is running smoothly by default from the manufacturer. It comes on a, uh, mine came on a 16 gigabyte uh, full-size SD card. There is another piece of software called, called Gerbil LPC firmware, which you can install if you don't want to run smoothly. I haven't done a side-by-side -side as to why you'd want one over the other. That might be something I'll look into more down the road, but I've heard great things about Smoothie, and I see absolutely no limitations as to why I would want to use the Gerbil one over the Smoothie that comes prepackaged on it, but if for some reason your eyes are set on the other firmware or you've done research and that's what you want to go with, you do have the ability to use either of those firmwares on this cohesion board. So that is nice that you have the you know kind of ability to choose which direction you want to go. Another thing that you can do is that I added air assist to my laser, which I'm probably going to show you guys all these upgrades in a separate video, but I've got this pump right here wired up to a little tube hooked up to a copper brake line. Well, I am powering it on and that pump is on the whole time and it's it's not super quiet. It actually causes a lot of vibration and uh, it's kind of annoying because sometimes when I'm running my uh, laser, I actually am you know, having it on for maybe 10 minutes or so prior to even using the laser because I'm doing stuff on the software side. Well, with this board, there's actually a MOSFET with a five volt control and you can set up your air assist and wire it up with like a relay or um, there's another uh, cool little power supply that you can wire directly uh, into the board, which will allow you to turn on and off the air assist via software. So that way, let's say I'm using Lightburn, I tell it, hey, I wanna run air assist for this job. When it starts to actually run the job, the air uh, assist will turn on. As soon as the job's done, the air assist will cut off. So that is something that's really cool, giving you you know, one more step of control from software, not having to just you know go over and plug things in, unplug things, which I think is really nice. Um, I don't have that set up right now, but I definitely will be upgrading to that uh, at some point in the near future. And kind of one of the last things as well is that um, if you wanted to with the Smoothie firmware, it is LCD screen compatible. So um, Cohesion does have a kind of rep wrap uh, 3D printer style LCD screen that you can hook up directly to the board, which will allow you to kind of standalone control some things. I haven't looked at exactly all the things that it allows you to do, but I'm sure it's things like home movement. You could, I would assume you can probably even run a job that you maybe export from Lightburn directly from the SD card if that's something you choose to do, which I don't know if I'll do, but that's uh, something that's kind of cool if that's what you're interested in. I My laser is in this room where I've got my desktop and a laptop over here. So for me, having untethered control isn't that big of a deal, but for some people that maybe have the laser out in their shop and they don't have a computer accessible, that could be nice being able to set it up on your computer, then run out to your shop or your garage and get a job going. One last thing that I want to talk about that is um, super cool that this board will allow you to do uh, in combination with the Lightburn software is the ability to actually add a Lightburn camera. So I did receive one of these that I'm going to be installing um, at some point. It's, it wasn't the first thing on my list, but this camera right here will allow you to do a couple of things. Um, if you drew something on paper, you can actually have the camera scan your drawing and then either cut it out or cut it on a different material. Um, so it has like a scanning functionality. Uh, one thing that I think is pretty awesome that I think I'll primarily be using this for is the ability to place your stock or work material in there, have the camera scan the inside, and then from the computer, seeing what the inside of your laser looks like with that material and being able to drag your work or your engraving that you want and position it on your material and actually have a visual. So um, hopefully that makes sense or you can picture that, but it is insane. So this is something that once I install, if I you know, get it to function accordingly, I will certainly be making a video on because I saw that in one of our, again, machines at work that's running Lightburn has something really similar to that. And it is, it is a really, really awesome thing. Um, and it also is gonna definitely ensure that you aren't wasting material by you know, engraving on the wrong portion or not having it fully on your stock material. So that, that camera in combination with this board and the Lightburn software is gonna be insane. So um, I will be following this up with a quick little install video on how to install this. And then I will also be following this up with kind of um, 
some either a video on Lightburn or just in combination Lightburn with this board, some of the stuff that you can do uh, or that I have done with this once I've gotten some time under my belt. But the main things are I wanted to make sure that you guys understood like what this board really has to offer. And then again, I will show you guys how easy it was for me to drop this board into my K40 laser uh, cutter and engraver. So on that note, I'm gonna end the video. Again, if you wanna find out more, check in the description down below. A huge thank you to Cohesion. They did send over this board for me to be able to install I actually, I did reach out to them in this instance because um, this is bored when I saw it and everything I heard about it, I, I knew I had to have it. So a huge thumbs up to them and for uh, Lightburn. And, and um, yeah, I, I'm just super excited to see what this laser is gonna allow me to do and incorporate into the projects that I make on this channel. So on that note, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you uh, are not already, consider supporting me on Patreon. There's some really cool rewards and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.